In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amin. Again, we're studying together Jesus Christ meeting with different people, different characters. And the idea is through his meeting with these people, we would know more about him and we would know what will happen if we meet him, whatever the situation that we're going through. So tonight I'm going to read to you from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 8, verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and told them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. When they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him what they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their consciences, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up, and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in the darkness, but have the light of life, and glory be to God forever. Amen. What a wonderful passage from the Gospel. This woman was caught in adultery, which is one of the sins that all of us know very well is not accepted and know very well that no one can defend. Especially in a conservative society like the society that was there at the time of Jesus and in any society, but especially at that time a woman to be caught in adultery. I just want you to think in your mind, what did this woman really feel like? According to the law, they have the right to stone her. How did they treat her? What did they tell her? How did they look to her? What did she feel? The first thing I want to tell you, is it fair that in the Old Testament that it says that this woman should be stoned? And let us go back to the very introduction that we started with this series of Bible study. The Old Testament was not there to save the people. I want you to understand this point very much. The Old Testament was there to show that everyone is going to sin. So the laws were there 
to show you what's right and what's wrong. And in the same time, God knows that everyone in a way or another going to break the law. So why would God put a law that we all are going to break? And we know very well that the wage of sin is death. The wage of sin is death. And we talked about this at the very beginning. Because when you break the law of God, you're telling him, God, I don't want you. I don't want your law. I'm not going to obey your law. And since God is the source of life, when you break away from God, when you disobey his commandment, you're disobeying life. So death here is a very natural result of us breaking the law. Can God say, like, give us an easier law? No, what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. The idea is that since Adam sinned, we cannot save ourselves or go back to that state of being with God alone. So you break the law in the Old Testament to find the result in the New Testament, the Savior. That without a Savior, without somebody who can carry you from sin to holiness, from death to life, we cannot do it on our own. That's why the whole world needs Christ, needs a Savior. Somebody who can carry your weakness and sins, and in Him you can have salvation and eternal life. Here is the Lamb of God who is going to carry the sins of the whole world. So yes, this woman was caught in adultery, but which is a sin that we, we, we hate, which is a sin that people would focus on so much on some societies other than other kinds of sins, but all sins will lead to death. So these people in their arrogance, they thought that because this was woman was caught in adultery and she was caught doing something wrong and some people were witnessing that she did something wrong, uh, that's their day. Yeah, let's, let's celebrate, let's stone that woman and fulfill the law. This is how people can judge other people. But this is not how Christ will judge. This is how sometimes in moments of arrogance, you would look to someone else and judge that person. Because he did something that's clearly wrong that I am not going to defend. But what about you? What about you? Yes, this woman was caught in adultery and Jesus did not defend her sin or even tried in any way to give her excuse for what she did. But when Jesus is looking to everyone, because he's not like us, he's not conceived by the outer figure, he can see the heart and the mind of men. I can tell you that he have seen not only the woman that was caught in adultery. He saw like everyone was caught in a way or another on different kinds, on different levels of sins. But what made him sad, not that that woman was caught in adultery, but that these people would forget about their own sins and take that woman and walk in the streets with her and she's definitely dying in her own skin, feeling terrible about everybody, even those who don't know the woman is a sinner have known that the woman is a sinner. Knowing that she's going to be stoned and killed in few minutes. And he's looking to them and seeing all that in front of him and see how we the humans sometimes forget ourselves when we're so much 
focusing on the mistakes of others. That's one thing. The other thing in the story is how did Jesus deal with that woman? If Christ told her, why did you do that? Nobody would blame him. If Christ gave her the look like, how dare you do something like that? Nobody would blame him because she's a sinner. She is a sinner. Nobody can defend that. Nobody can defend her sins. He has the right to do that. He has the right to blame. He has all the right to tell her what you did is wrong. But I want you to think again, who is Christ to you? That's why we're doing this Bible study. Because what do you think about Christ? How do you see him? When you're a sinner like that woman, there is only one who can understand what you're going through. There is only one who can help you in this situation. The one who can carry your burden, who can carry your sin and your guilt and your frustration from yourself and from others. The amazing thing, Jesus did not even look to the woman. Yeah, one of the things that we have noticed this, the, while studying the meetings of Christ with different people, different sinners, different situations, how sensitive he is to the weak and to the sinner. You know, one of the things that really hurt people is the way we look, the eyes. When you look to somebody, you might give the whole message. When you look to somebody who you think is a sinner and who really might be a sinner, how do you look? How do you look to a woman in that situation. Can you ever think of a look of love, a look of feeling what she's going through? Christ did. He doesn't want to embarrass her. He looked to the ground. And they asked him, teacher, you say you're coming from God and fulfill, fulfill the law. This is your law. And he, he didn't say no. He didn't argue. This is the wrong law. He didn't say, no, you misunderstand the law. Yes, it's my law. But let me start to write a few things. Some of the people, it's not written, but some of the people who wrote about that passage said that he started to write the name of the people and the sins of everyone. <laughs> Maybe. Then he told them a very simple and a very strong message. Whoever of you is without a sin, let him cast the first one. So, okay, yeah, we, we'll do the law. But who's going to do it now? Let me see who's going to do it. And I'm ready to say, maybe, you're ready to, to do the first one? Okay, but... Let me write a few things so maybe you know very well that you're going to be next to be stoned. <laughs> then everyone put his head down, one after the other. And they were what? They were scribes, they were Pharisees, they were religious people. They were not like just regular people. And that's exactly what it is. That we all on all levels are sinners. But that's not why Christ came. He came to save, not to judge. He's there for you at that moment to help you, to save you, to cover you. You know the idea of covering? To redeem you. That's the work of of Jesus. And the amazing thing that sometimes when we're down, when we're weak, when we're sinners, 
rather than going to Christ we go to people <laughs> sometimes we choose to talk to people rather than talking with Christ and you think people are going to feel uh, love and understanding to you yeah they might but then they're going to start to say I don't know why dear is doing this why she's doing that she has no excuse they're going to judge you they're going to give you excuse one time then the second time they're going to warn you then they're going to give you the lecture then they're going to condemn you but the only one who's really there for you is Christ after the people start to leave he looked to the woman and told her woman did anybody condemn you she said no no one master and he said and I'm not gonna condemn you go and do not sin that's Christ that's Christ if till now you're confused about who's Christ you need to read the Bible carefully he's not your parents who's going to give you the lecture he's not Abuna or the servant or the teacher who's going to take you on the side and start to uh, be harsh on you he's not he's not he loves you and all what he wants is to give you life is to take that death that you're carrying and give you life it's an amazing a beautiful passage from the gospel that shows how God treats and deals with the sinners even with the sins that we're so sensitive about he knows the weakness of humans and he's there to help them and to help you and to help me please go to him and hear these words go your sins are forgiven and from now on come to me with your heavy burdens and I will give you rest I will give you peace and glory be to God forever Amen